Welcome, you're listening to Jay's Analysis. This is Jay Dyer, the author of Esoteric Hollywood Sex, Cults, and Symbols in Film. I thought that it would be necessary and appropriate to do a discussion of just the avalanche of political scandal, mayhem, and circus that has arisen in the last month or so, two months. Uh, it's just unbelievable, really, off the charts. We, you know, we think about Watergate, we think about that being something of import historically, which that was probably... Uh, overhyped and uh, made a bigger deal of than it actually was to kind of probably plant the seeds of kind of the dissolution of the older system of how we believe that the president and the uh, the electoral system of representatives and senators and so forth uh, that that these people really run the country when of course they don't i think probably the system has known for a long time that it would eventually become apparent that we live in this total oligarchy that has these these front men these puppets these so-called elected officials that kind of stand as a frontispiece kind of like a a movie set with a big fake building or a fake saloon that's you know just the front of the building and then you go inside and there's nothing there right well, I think it's kind of the same idea with the well, with with what the bankers and the oligarchs knew would would come in time uh, that the the people would eventually probably catch on to this, and so what needs to happen or what ought to happen is just kind of the the dissolution and alteration of the system as a whole into something new, and that is mentioned at length in Tragedy and Hope, which is the the large tome by Dr. Carol Quigley, who was the mentor of Bill Clinton. He was a professor at Georgetown, and he was a CFR historian. He wrote his massive book and other books from the archives of the CFR. And so in that regard, that's why the book is so important. Even though it's uh, from 1966, it still shows the overall plan and a lot of reading in between the lines, a lot of deeper stuff that we don't get elsewhere that you don't get in mainstream media. Now, what happens for most people is that they get caught up in the news, they get caught up in media, they get caught up in what's happening today and tomorrow. And of course, all this stuff gets forgotten. And most of the the presidential elections are the exact same way. Nobody cares about Dukakis and Bush anymore, right? That was, when I was a kid, that was a big deal, the Dukakis and Bush. That was all anybody was talking about. And uh, nowadays, right, it's... Is this issue of uh, Trump and Clinton. And the reason I want to talk about it is because what has come out <laughs> just completely vindicates everything that so-called conspiracy theorists have said, right? Now, I mean, I've been called this for a long time. I, I've, I've been involved in politics, too. I had a period of years where I wasn't a libertarian, but I was involved in working to support Ron Paul and Rand Paul. And I even co-broke a national news story that was intimately i would say connected to Rand paul gaining several poll points and winning the kentucky senatorial election this was in relationship to a democratic provocateur who was kind of using saul Alinsky style tactics now that's all in the past that was 2010 here we are six years later and the national scene is of course just it's like nuclear it's nuclear nuclear explosion of politics to, to use the Google's the maps, filters on internet, the words of W, right? What, what did W say, right? Nuclear. And that's what we've got. We've got a nuclear explosion of political insanity. And everybody who talks about it, who's been alive longer than I've been alive, says they don't remember anything like this before. 
They've never seen anything like this, right? It pales in comparison to Watergate, and it does. And what's amazing is that Hillary Clinton, with all of these, this avalanche of scandals, is not, and it's like one one hundredth of Watergate. And that took Nixon down, right? Now, this is like 10 times that, but the mainstream media, of course, as we know, they won't report on the WikiLeaks stuff, not because WikiLeaks itself is some great paragon of what's legitimate. I don't think it is. And in fact, I'm going to show you, I've, I've argued for several years now that it's also part of the dialectic, it's part of this, the stage managed psychodrama that we're all supposed to participate in. But what is interesting is that I said on a boiler room, our show on alternate current radio, which you can check out. Great show. I said, uh, it's on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. at uh, alternatecurrentradio.com, 21stCenturyWire.com. I said that this whole thing was because Hillary and the Clintons were so corrupt that they had made so many people angry in the establishment. So we go back to Benghazi. We go back to the time of uh, the destruction of Libya with Hillary heading up that project and the government apparatus, the State Department, and so forth. That regime change, which destroyed that a developing country for at the behest of course of the western oligarchs oil men and bankers and uh, hillary's uh, crew clinton foundation and so forth all benefiting from all this this corruption uh, i said that well the, the way to understand why assange and wikileaks even if they're not what they appear to be uh, the way to understand why they would leak all this stuff is because there are a lot of people who are apparently probably very likely not happy with the clintons i mean if you think about the clintons they've got this long history of making so many people angry and a long trail of dead bodies i mean it's just unbelievable that these people right so you now the clintons kind of they're not i don't think at the top of the pyramid they are part of the pyramid there's no question there they're they're allowed to actually do things they actually do run things they were involved in you know the cia drug tra traffic and all that back in mena arkansas we all know about all that public stuff and yet these people are still in politics and to show the absurdity of all this we saw who does who does, does the bush family come out and support well obviously the clintons right now we're not going to talk about donald trump really because that's not the important aspect of all this what's most important in this analysis that i'm giving is the tremendous amount of corruption that shows again Everything that we quote conspiracy theorists have been saying is totally correct. And we don't say that because we just sat around making up things or speculating. I mean, the smartest people that I know, very, very highly, highly intelligent people, are people who would be classed as quote conspiracy theorists because they actually know what's going on in the world. Right? I mean, we're talking about people who have read hundreds, thousands of books. Okay? I have a giant library. Right? I mean, I'm not speaking about these topics from no knowledge. I mean, I've been studying this stuff since I was 18, 19, right? I'm almost 40. So I'm almost 15, 20 years deep into this topic. I don't even think I'm an expert at this stage. I still think I'm <laughs> you know, learning new things every day. But what I am glad to learn and am glad to see is that the whole system is such a joke and so ridiculous and so unbelievably corrupt that I don't think they can even contain it. And you say, well, how might that benefit the system? Well, I think uh, Chris over at Hoaxbusters had a good point that, you know, like Quigley says, this is a, the age of transition. And regardless of what you think of the American system, which, I, you know, I'm a big critic of that. I, I criticize it very often in my talks and podcasts and articles. Being an enlightenment experiment it's an older phase that's got to be phased out, right? So it's not a question of good or bad or what you like or don't like about it. For the ruling social engineers and oligarchs, that phase, that beta stage of world order, and Americanism is the seeds, the beginning beta stage of the new world order, right? Francis Bacon's New Atlantis, that has to go away to transition into the new stage. So there's probably a lot of truth to what Chris says, as we discussed in our last uh, discussion at Hoaxbusters, uh, that the the system as it is has to be phased out. And one way to do that is to just kind of light a fire and let it explode. And so the 
total demonstration of how corrupt it really is through all this WikiLeaks stuff could also play into that, right? It could play into the fact that, you know, it causes apathy. People say, oh, well, there's no point. All this stuff is just ridiculous. Who cares? You know, let's just fall back into fantasy. Let's just give me my fantasy football, give me my NFL. None of the stuff even matters. Who cares? It's a joke. Let's just uh, eat, eat, drink, and be merry, right? To use the words of Solomon. Now, I want to look at... <laughs> Again, what has I got? I have to say, Jay's analysis has been pointing this out for a long time. As has Twenty First Century Wire. Uh, there's many, many excellent articles that Patrick and uh, Sean Helton, Vanessa Beely, and others have been writing for so long over at Twenty First Century Wire that have been saying this for so long, and now it's all coming out. Everything that we've talked about for a long time about how the system really works, about how espionage works, how whistleblowers and leaking works and all this stuff targeted leaks and so forth it's all being demonstrated right now and we're going to look at uh, several examples that show again we are vindicated we are right we know what we're talking about the entire establishment apparatus is completely fake it's completely a joke they're there to basically be operation mockingbird 2.0 to reinforce the globalist line the, the very things that we've been talking about for so long, right? So let's talk, uh, let's look at some examples. Now, I want to look first at uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik, who is a frequent guest on Alex Jones. He's, of course, the author of many of the, co-author of many of the uh, Tom Clancy books. Uh, <clears throat> this is not necessarily an endorsement of everything that Pachenik says. I'm just pointing out that it's interesting in this video that he says this because uh, I posted my Snowden WikiLeaks analysis a few years ago that he actually reposted. Uh, and what I argued in my piece, as I'll show here in a little bit, is that the Snowden WikiLeaks phenomenon was basically um, a deep state apparatus version of how you do a target leak, right? Targeted leaks, limited hangouts. Now, when it came to explaining how and why the establishment would be if it is indeed a deep state thing, why would they be leaking all this stuff on Hillary when Hillary quite clearly seems to be the ultimate total globalist candidate? And she absolutely does, right? Setting aside Trump for a second, I mean, Hillary has been to Bilderberg many times. And she's the total darling. She's the Southern <coughs> Dyke Bell <laughs> of the establishment, along with, uh, along with Bill, her husband. How dare you? How dare you? Now, let's uh, look at this clip from Dr. Pachenik, which shows my point that I made a few weeks ago on Boiler Room, that this is uh, an element or a faction within the establishment that uh, it does not like Hillary. And I think that that is true. Now, again, keep in mind, this is all still at the level of stage dialectics in a way, I would say, because Hillary... Uh, it doesn't run things, right? Hillary is not even a billionaire. So there are oligarchs, much older, families much older, much more powerful uh, that are above and beyond the Clinton Foundation. But what we're seeing with the Clinton Foundation, what we're seeing with Hillary and the staged political theater that's all coming out and how it's all rigged with the media and as we're going to see, tied into all the scams and the CIA and all that, it's an image, it's a picture of how the whole thing works. And that's why it's so unbelievable. So let's look at this uh, quote here, this clip from Dr. Pachenik that shows, as I said, that WikiLeaks is a deep state apparatus leak engine, which I said for all along. On this 2016, Hillary and Bill Clinton and their entourage of assistance affected a civilian coup. In contrast to the usual concept of a coup where the military is involved and takes over the White House and communication centers, very much like the scenarios you see in a movie, this coup was done silently and very effectively through two methods, corruption and co-optation. The Clintons had been involved in co-opting our White House, our judiciary, our CIA, our Federal Bureau of Investigation, 
our Attorney General Loretta Lynch and our Director of the FBI, James Comey, for some time now. What they've done is to make sure that they were part and parcel of a group of people who were interrelated through political cronyism. However, in order to stop this coup, we in the intelligence community and others involved have informally gotten together and with their permission, I am beginning to announce that we've initiated a counter coup through Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. What has happened in effect when uh, Comey had to open up the case of Hillary Clinton and discuss the emails that were involved with the Anthony Weiner case, it was not the case itself that was as important as the fact that this was the entree for many of us in the counter coup to say to the administration, we have your number. Not only do we have your number, we're going to stop you from making Hillary the president of the United States. And at the same time, we will convict and indict the president of the United States, Loretta Lynch, and many others who were involved in the cover-up of the massive corruption that occurred under the Clinton Foundation. Now, in both cases, their coup was silent. And our counter coup was silent, and it was all uh, transgressed or occurred on the internet. And this is probably the first time in the history of any country where a coup was initiated on through the internet, and a counter coup was initiated through the internet. I am just a small part of something far bigger than myself. It was the brave men and women who were in the FBI, the CIA, the Director of Intelligence the uh, military intelligence and men and women in 15 other intelligence organizations who were sick and tired of seeing this corruption in the White House and the Justice Department and in the intelligence system. And we decided that there was something we had to do in order to save the Republic. So we initiated a counter coup through Julian Assange, who's been very brave and, and really quite formidable in his, uh, in his ability to come forth and provide all the necessary emails that we gave to him in order to undermine Hillary and Bill Clinton. Again, America, we're going through a major, major transition. Now, so there's uh, Pachinik admitting that the deep state apparatus is who is working with WikiLeaks. Now... <laughs> Again, I said this all along. I said it for three or four years back to when <clears throat> this, or maybe even back to 2010, 2011, when, when WikiLeaks started being big in the news and we were told about all this nonsense of uh, how they were going to bring down the, the military expansionism and the, the foreign policy destruction and all this kind of stuff through Iraq and all that. And, and we saw that the videos that come out, that it's actually old stuff. It's nothing new. They were leaking all kinds of bizarre things that had nothing to do with, like, uh, I found one time at WikiLeaks that they had posted the manuals for certain fraternities and sororities, right? Well, yeah, isn't that a big deal? Not really. It's, it was, uh, what do you, it's basically just a, a pseudo leak engine that's, that's allowed to have targeted leaks for persons that might be, um, unfavorable right with the establishment at some some point now <clears throat> patrick at uh, 21st century wire posted an interesting piece a while back that highlighted that dealing with the panama leaks and it sh he showed there how the the leaks there were targeted at certain persons to make them look bad and who was in the background well of course soros foundations ford foundation right these these are this is who in the, is in the background of this so-called panama papers leak engine now that's the same pattern for all of the leak engines and i'm going to play you once again the clip that i played many times from rt which is john young of crypto discussing staged leaks so check this out because this is going to help you understand how this is part of the establishment leaking things on purpose bill since 1996 now the co-founder of that site joins me now to tell us more John Young, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Now, as I said, Cryptome.org has been in the business of making government secrets public long before WikiLeaks was. Tell us a little bit about the history and philosophy of your website. The site was set up principally to publish information about communication security, 
which is the fundamental technology for keeping secrets. And it grew out of my participation in a group called Cypherpunks, which was also a group where Julian Assange learned his skills. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, this group uh, was composed of very highly educated engineers, scientists, and technicians who were mostly working for corporations and government on the technology of communication security. And they knew that this was going to come into the private market as a Cold War wound down, and they wanted to get information out to the public about what was coming. So we set up this site to make that information available from people who had access to it but did not want to be identified as a source. Now, in all of the time that you've been doing this, it's attracted the attention of the FBI. You, I've read that you've said that FBI, FBI agents have come to visit you. What do you think their, their surveillance is about? They use our site to see what's going on, and so that's something that we've learned about sites like ours. They're left in place in order to watch who comes there and see what kind of information we put up. Government authorities run these sites of their own, and so that and they watch other sites like ours. We've learned this over time, is that the reason we haven't been shut down is we're useful to them to see what kind of attention is paid to this material. We think they actually feed us material to put up as they're feeding information to WikiLeaks and many other sites that, that operate the same way. But in terms of their being able to see everything we're doing, we know that we cannot keep any secrets about our site and we tell our readers, you should not expect us to protect you because we're being watched and every other site is being watched just like WikiLeaks is being watched. So there is no secrecy on the internet and we make that clear. That's the lesson we've learned, and we now try to spread that, uh, that you have to be very aware of the Internet, which is a very large-scale spying machine. What really, really motivates you, though, to expose these secrets? Why is this your vocation? Why do you feel strongly that this needs to happen? Well, because secrecy is the biggest um, enemy of democracy, and it's way overdone. And so threats to democracy are coming from the inside, from the secret keepers and that they need to be exposed. It, it, it has become a huge industry, it's extremely expensive, and you can't criticize it, you can't get access to it. Because those who go inside that world are sworn to lifetime secrecy about it, and they can never talk about it. And I'm saying that's a system that is anti-democratic, and it's a big business now. Thousands of firms have been brought into it since 911 because it's very lucrative. And so we need to have less secrecy in Congress, less secrecy in the presidency, less secrecy in all forms of government. Let me ask you this, though. Some of your criticism is about not vetting information, publishing the addresses, for example, home addresses of CIA agents or detailed maps of government facilities saying that this is endangering people's lives. This is welcoming attacks and giving people um, you know, details on how, how to commit them and that there needs to be some kind of distinction between what's acceptable to put out there for the public and what's not. What do you say to those critics? Well, well I say to those critics that they're, that they're pulling the, the authoritative trick, acting like they know better. We don't pull that trick. We don't think we know better than ordinary people about how to judge information. But we know that authoritatives are always saying things like you just said. You're going too far. You're putting lies at risk. There's blood on your hands. Are you? Uh, th no. Are you putting lives at risk by publishing the addresses of a CIA agent at home? This has been going on for years, and they always pull this. We've been told by former spies these are just standard reactions to this to get sympathy for them. They, in fact, will leak that kind of information themselves. You should know that governments leak more information than all the rest of us put together for their own purposes. Like what? Give us an example. Well, as they leak secrets, they get lax. They run operations to leak secrets to test their own system. Um, their own disgruntled employees uh, are are encouraged to leak secrets and to see what happens. They they leave laptops around as though left behind by a drunk. They leave papers around. They put stuff on WikiLeaks. These are all well-known techniques to alarm the public, create sympathy, and get more funding. So this is uh, this is a business, and, and so that. Um, we would like to say, well, why don't we talk about that? Is there a better way to do that than to, than to deceive the public about this? Why don't we just own up to it? For example, uh, the U.S. military loses more secrets than any other single organization, but they never admit it because they say that would aid the enemy. But why not be candid about that, that your systems are leaking? Talking about how the government will leak information purposely to test their systems or to garner more support. Do you have an example of that? 
Well, I can only say that there are schools to train people like Bradley Manning and doing just that on the internet. It's at Fort Huachuca. This is one of their training syllabuses that we publish. Is they, they, they actually teach young people how to run these sting operations by leaking information to test the system. They have something called A teams and B teams that do combat on the internet by leaking this stuff. They've hired hackers to do that. Hackers, in fact, are favorite employees now of such groups. And so uh, this is talked about at hacker conferences about how you get in on this. You can pick up good money by one being an informant two is running these test systems infiltrating systems um, sending out false information uh, but this is not new this has been going on ever since there's been a spy world and so i just say it's now the internet is now used for that purpose what does it achieve though well it, it achieves one funding uh, if you don't have threats you don't need the system so leaking threats, so then people say, oh, no, this is scary, this information that has randomly, surprisingly gotten out, so we need to go support whatever our government is saying it needs in terms of ramping up uh, Homeland Security funding or, uh, you know, breaching civil liberties in the name of protecting, protecting against terrorism, that sort of thing? Is That's that what correct. you're... In fact, there's the latest one that perfectly matches WikiLeaks. It's called Cyber Security. We have a brand new cyber command that's just been given a huge amount of money. It's been in the works, though, ever since the Internet popped up. Cyber Security. And so if WikiLeaks hadn't invented itself, let's assume that it did, it would have been invented because this is a gold mine for people who deal in cybersecurity. And don't forget, most of this work is handed out to contractors and universities and research institutions, and so it's widely based um, uh, money flow. And so without that, we would have no defense department, we'd have no national security apparatus, and we'd have less need for a, a president or a congress. So one of the things that's important to keep in mind here is that this is a deeply entrenched approach. Now, it turns out I'm not anti-government, I'm not anti -government, I'm anti-secret government. But aren't there some things that, you know, for national security reasons, it's better for the public to not know? No. You don't think there's any? No, I'm saying that needs to be more openly discussed. Right now, it's a knee-jerk reaction. I see far too many sensible people saying that. And then we need to talk more about what the Internet threat is and what is cyber threat. Can you give us an example? And why are so many leaks coming from inside these security systems rather than outside? Mm -hmm. And why is that happening? Why are your systems so poorly secured that you can't control your own system? Now, that's out there as documentation. And one of the ways, though, you, you cover up your own faults is to raise a new threat and blame other people. So, and that's what we see coming with WikiLeaks. It's going to be blamed for the State Department's own failure to protect its own material. More importantly, the, the military is trying to deflect attention for how did Bradley Manning or whoever it was did this, and we don't know for sure it was Bradley Manning. How did this happen? This is supposed to be the most powerful, most adept, well-funded military system in the world. How did it happen? Well, first thing, it's a, it's a sting operation. It didn't happen the way it said. It, it has all the earmarks of one. What are those for well, an average person well, like myself some, who wouldn't some know? Some low-level employee was able to get access to a classified system, and he just had this bright idea to take it and give it off to someone. That's almost a joke in cybersecurity world because that's exactly what you do to test the system. But mainly you've got to have some credibility that it's the real thing. And so it's almost as though it was a plot to do exactly this. Who benefits in that scenario? Cybercom does. They just got a huge funding. They were having trouble getting it on its feet. And so now they got a huge fund. They got a huge contract they're handing out. Uh, the conference I mentioned where NSA admitted that it can't secure networks was a, was a business conference to contractors who want contracts to help secure the Internet in response to the WikiLeaks threat and others like it. Clarify what is Cybercon? Uh, Cybercon is a PR stunt by the Defense Department. The NSA is extremely adept, has been doing exactly what CyberCon does for many, many years. Now, so there we see John Young giving us kind of the background of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, and you'll notice that security is a big, big moneymaker, and especially cybersecurity and any of these threats. These, these threats then work to the advantage of the system because the system then says, oh, see, We've got all these uh, weak points, and we've got to have so much more funding to back all this up. Let's set up new programs, and we've got to have the military running all these psyops, and blah, 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 blah. And keep in mind, too, that Assange said at the beginning of his hangout that there would be no mentioning of 9-11 as an inside job. So that right there is questionable. WikiLeaks would not at all say 
there was anything shady about 9-11. Now, if you're a true leaker, I don't see how on earth you could not think that 9-11 was shady, right? I mean, you'd have to know this stuff, especially if you're coming from the inside, right? All these insiders. And as we've said many times, the real leakers are not given focus and attention in the media. When the entire media turns to it, generally speaking, it's legitimate. Now, that makes things a little bit more difficult given the fact that the media is not reporting on WikiLeaks. It's the alternative media that's covering it, of course. The entire mainstream media is ignoring it because it's not amenable to Hillary. So we're going to look at some of those leaks, some of those important issues that have come out that are real. These are real emails, I think. And we're going to look at why, again, why that might be coming out. Uh, and it does seem to, at some level at least, back up the theory, the view, as I said several weeks ago, that there is a faction of the of people in the establishment that are not happy with Hillary. Just think about how many people have been screwed over by the Clintons. It's got to be a lot of people. So that is part of the game, but is it a bigger game? I think it's the real question. Beyond Trump and Clinton and the election, we're talking about the big scale, long term social engineering and geopolitical aspects. That's what we want to look at in this. So let's look at some of these big leaks and see what we see here. What we want to look at is the CFR background to this, which I pointed out again for several years, that they had the long-term plan to destroy Syria, and they would use the radical jihad, which is basically just hired mercenaries under the banner of the fictional entity created by Western intelligence known as ISIS. And we're going to see this, first of all, Hillary admitting uh, as a, 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 an intimate of the CFR that the CFR runs things. Oh, thank you very much, um, Richard. And I am delighted to be here in these new headquarters. Um, I have been often to, uh, I guess, the mothership in New York City. Uh, but it's good to have an outpost of the council right here down the street from the State Department. Uh, we get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have this far to go to uh, be told uh, what we should be doing and uh, how uh, we should uh, think about the future. I mean, Richard just uh, gave what could be uh, described as a, a mini version uh, of my remarks in talking about uh, the issues that confront us. But I look out at uh, this audience filled with uh, not only many friends and colleagues, uh, but people who have served in prior administrations. And so there is never a time when the inbox is not full. Um, you know, shortly um, before I started at the State Department, a former Secretary of State uh, called me with this advice, don't try to do too much. And it seemed like a wise admonition, if only it were possible. But the international agenda today is unforgiving. Two wars, conflict in the Middle East, ongoing threats of violent extremism and nuclear proliferation, global recession, climate change, hunger and disease, and a widening gap between the rich and the poor. Exactly, right. <laughs> the widening gap between the rich and the poor, which is what the CFR specializes at because they're run by a bunch of billionaire oligarchs above them. The CFR, of course, is part of the Western oligarchic establishment. As I mentioned and detailed in my Carol Quigley talks based on his book, Tragedy and Hope. So here's Hillary saying that the CFR is who gives the marching orders, obviously, to policy, to the media, and so forth, foreign policy. And what we're going to see now is that the CFR, interestingly, was what who was behind Al-Qaeda in Syria. Now, this is the CFR's own website, and this was 2011, excuse me, 2012, Al-Qaeda specter in Syria, and this is where they call for the influx of jihadis who bring discipline, religious fervor, and battle experience from Iraq, and this is what is needed in Syria, they say, in this article. Now, this was back in 2012 when we were starting to see the attempt on the takedown of Assad in Syria. And this is Hillary, obviously, working with the CFR in the background. This is what they did, right? So there's no question as to whether, you know, somebody might say, oh, well, this is just some, some proposal. They didn't actually do this. No, here it is. And in fact, as I was thinking about this title, uh, <laughs> I don't know that this guy was really that clever in thinking about it. He might have been. But if you think about it, 
It could also be an apostrophe is. Al-Qaeda is specter. <laughs> specter, of course, S-P. E C T R E in the James Bond villain sense. Now I'm not being serious with that, but I thought that was kind of interesting. What did we see even in the mainstream news regarding Hillary's WikiLeaks in relationship to ISIS, right? This is perfectly in line with what we just saw in relationship to the CFR calling for the use of Al Qaeda, just rename it ISIS, right? Who's funding it? Uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar are funding ISIS. The, are, these are the BFF, long-time proxy states of the United States. Jordan, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, right? These are the Gulf states that are the BFF. I mean, I don't know as to how else to describe it, right? I mean, this is this, this is CF, CIA playground. This is There's U.S. military bases everywhere in this region. And what do we see? Leaked email exchanges allegedly between Clinton and her 2016 campaign chair Podesta reportedly showed the Democratic nominee identify Saudi Arabia and Qatar as clandestine financial logistical supporters of ISIS. Exactly. This is what we've been saying for years now uh, since the CFR called for this in Syria. Now, how do we know that? Well, because this because Al Qaeda has forever been the program is the best way to put it of the CIA. Right. It's never been different. It's never changed. It's never been outside of the aegis of the CIA. It was never rogue. That's all baloney made up in Western mainstream media to confuse you and to get you uh, to get you off balance and thinking that there's all these different competing groups and that there's the moderate rebels and Al Nusra and all this. No, that's all the same. On a more ridiculous level at 21st Century Wire, it came out a few days ago, the CIA CNN gatekeeper Chris Chris Cuomo says Americans are criminals for reading the WikiLeaks. <laughs> this is so ridiculous, right? One of the most maligned and gaff-prone mainstream media pundits as 21st Century Wire notes uh, that you're not supposed to read these things. And if you do, you are a criminal, they say. It's illegal to, to read these things. And we're going to look here at the CNN clip of him saying also this. Also interesting is, remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. Joining us now, CNN's... Right. Now they go on to say that you need to only go through CNN to try to figure out what's going on. You're not competent. You're stupid. Only go through CNN, the most ridiculous news outlet imaginable. Uh, maybe Vice or Headline News or something like that could top them. BuzzFeed, Gawker. That's that's arguable, though. I don't know who's worse. They're all pretty much in the same garbage juice smoothie blender mix there, but uh, let's look at some more of these leaks and see how deep it gets. And what we're going to see is that, again, it vindicates everything that we in the so-called conspiracy realm have been saying about how politics as a whole, this is a window into the totality of the corruption of the entire system. Now, coming back to 21st Century Wire, new emails, Clinton Foundation VIP donors buy access while Hillary was Secretary of State. And this is just basic political corruption 101. We all probably knew this, but it's interesting to see that this comes out because this directly connects to these states that we mentioned, these Gulf states that are involved in ISIS and the funding of the Jihad. Far from being a charity organization, 21st Century Wire notes, the Clinton Foundation appears to be merely a vehicle for those who want access to a USS to a US based syndicate of international oligarchs, elite financial institutions, foreign governments, and even dictator friendly Lebanese Nigerian billionaires. Uh, 21 Wire reported last week this international syndicate involves the feudal monarchs of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and others. Exactly. And after more than two years, the Freedom of Information Act requests of a lengthy litigation, the truth is finally out. Hillary Clinton's senior staff at the State Department routinely worked with the Clinton Foundation to reward big donors with special access to the government. Exactly. Now, this is important because we want to mention as well, the list included three executives from organizations that have donated millions to the Clinton Foundation. Bob McCann, then president of UBS, United Bank of Scotland. Judith Roden, president of the Rockefeller Foundation. And Hikmet Ersek, 
the CEO of Western Union. Now these are, interestingly, drug banks, and we're going to need to remember that because that's going to come into play when we look deeper into these connections here in a moment, that the Clintons apparently never got away from these drug connections, obviously. And that's not to say that the skull and bones Bush side of things is uh, not also implicated in this. They all are. That's the point. Right. According to the Clinton Foundation website, UBS contributed 500,000 and 1 million. Rockefellers, 10 million, 25 million. Unbelievable. Now, this is just small level political corruption. I know that that sounds crazy. Twenty million dollars. But yeah, compared to what these big banks are going to as we're going to see uh, dealt with in terms of the drug corruption and money laundering billions. Right. So, I mean, this is nothing. And this is the giant narco underworld currency prop up that basically props up the the US economy. Now we're going to go back to July and we're going to look at the reason why the Hillary investigation was put on a, on hold and apparently is supposedly back in full swing was because FBI Director Comey was a board member of HSBC, the Clinton Foundation and Drug Cartel Bank of Choice, which 21st Century Wire covered. Much has been made of the FBI Department of Justice letting off Hillary for mishandling classified information. But Comey was manning the key choke point in the decision to not hold Clinton accountable. And that's because she he was involved in the curtain, behind the curtain, of international high finance. An argument can be made that Comey has multiple conflicts of interest, uh, given the fact that he was on the board. Now, what do we know about this bank? Well, let's take a look at this massive drug bank, which is also in mainstream news as such. Bloomberg, HSBC, judge approves 1.9 billion drug money laundering accord. Now, I wonder who did, was this paid to the government and the U.S. government? I mean, it's the U.S. government that runs the drugs anyway, so it's like the Satan has sued Lucifer. HSBC. 1.9 billion agreement with the U.S. to resolve charges that enabled Latin American drug cartels to launder billions of dollars. And this was finally approved by a federal judge. John Gleason of Brooklyn, New York, signed off yesterday on a deferred p prosecution agreement, a critical component of the London-based bank. Here we go. City of London, once again, that's the real Illuminati here. $670 billion in wire transfers. And more than $9.4 in purchases of U.S. currency from HSBC Mexico, allowing for money laundering for cartels. Now, this is what I've been talking about in a lot of interviews recently. And when we look at HSBC, what do we see? Once again, Clinton Foundation, this is The Guardian, mainstream news, received $81 million from clients of HSBC. Leaked files reveal identities of wealthy donors with accounts in Geneva. Donors gave as much as $81 million to Bill Hillary and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. And this is, a, <laughs> this is just unbelievable. So things haven't changed since Gary Webb and uh, the MENA Arkansas unholy alliance story of the 80s and the CIA, it's no different. This is the same crew, the same cartel. And again, these people, the Clinton Foundation, this this is just one little brick of the pyramid. Okay, this is not the top of the pyramid. It's not the totality. This is one little brick in a giant pyramid, a giant cocaine pyramid that is undergirding the entire global economy. And uh, Daniel Esselin made a good point about that in his book, Shadow Masters. You got to read that if you haven't read it. Michael Ruppert talked about this, uh, which I think that guy is questionable, but his Crossing the Rubicon book has some great chapters on the narco economy, as well as the interviews I've done with Catherine Austin Fitz, where we discussed this at length. And here we see this is the New World Order being laid bare, even in mainstream media. The more amazing admissions in the, all of this scandal leak mayhem is not from WikiLeaks, but from the FBI investigation into the Clintons themselves. Now, why this is released again, is, I guess, from this faction that is supposedly not happy with the Clintons and the new FBI release, according to CNBC, says the email probe refers to the shadow government in the first 100 pages. It claims, uh, talk about Hillary Clinton not being concerned with protocols. Well, duh, of course not. She's uh, been put into power by the Bilderberg and CIA CFR establishment and uh, the Clintons were pretty much CIA in their college days since their college days so of course they're not going to care about protocol protocol is for 
the underlings and the groveling peasantry. And what we read here that I think is most relevant and Chris and I have talked about this on Hoaxbusters, and I've mentioned this with other <clears throat> interviews I've done with people, who people like to tout FOIA requests and what's admitted here. One revelation of the documents came from an interview with an unidentified person who suggested that the Freedom of Information Act request related to the Clinton Foundation went through a group called the Shadow Government. <laughs> there was a powerful group of very high-ranking state officials that referred to referred to as the seventh floor or the shadow government. And then it goes on to talk about how people in government didn't know what this was or that it existed. Well, of course not. That's because the conspiracy theorists have been right all along saying that the government's run by a shadow government. And there is the mainstream media media admitting everything that we've been saying for so long, the shadow government. Absolutely. And the people that are censoring these FOIA requests, these high, high level, black ops types in the background there are people above them and that's the billionaires that run the planet now let's look at some more of these revelations from the leaks as we continue to investigate the political mayhem and circus of the clinton election fiasco interesting ones that comes out uh, was highlighted first in my feed by chateau hartiste a great website run by the enigmatic character Royce, very good writer and Royce points out that the Clinton machine wants to shove blue pills down the throats of Americans because the WikiLeaks cable reads, and I quote, As I've mentioned, we've all been quite content to demean the government, drop civics in general, and, con and conspire to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. Exactly. The unawareness remains strong, but compliance is obliviously fading rapidly. This problem demands serious, serious thinking, not just poll-driven, demographic, demographically inspired messaging. But no, this shows that if the people are, who are behind the shadow government are willing to say this, and they are, they're the same ones that are willing to drug your water and give you vaccines and GMOs, right? So uh, the toxic sludge culture that we highlight so often at Jay's analysis, uh, here you have it admitted in these emails, uh, the people in the shadow government, and their frontlings like Podesta and Clinton saying that they want to produce the brave new world citizenry it has a, a list that's pretty good and of course not exhaustive but I like the way he collected it together here with uh, highlighted points and we're gonna read these because they're so important the details about the Clinton's involvement in this uranium one deal which is supposedly part of a connection to the officials in the Russian government, probably that fifth column that I've talked about many times that Alexander Dugan has talked about, was well, the Clinton Foundation that has this deal with them. So all this talk from Hillary about uh, Russian hacking that we're going to get to in a minute as uh, supposedly being behind her nonsense uh, corruption, right? Uh, as if Russia is who's, who's doing this, Hillary's Russian hacking hoax that uh, Patrick Henningsen did an excellent article on that we're going to look at here in a minute, 21st Century Wire. Uh, no, on the contrary, it's the Clinton campaign that's been involved directly, or excuse me, the Clinton Foundation that's been involved directly with uh, backdoor corporate deals in Russia, uh, not Donald Trump. Uh, the Justice Department concluded that the Clinton campaign uh, was likely in order, was likely colluded with, the, excuse me, the Department of Justice, we now know this, has come out since Roisey wrote this, that they colluded to prepare her for uh, the so-called investigation that there was a point man that Podesta had there in the Department of Justice, obviously. Uh, Podesta also mentions in his emails the, quote, Catholic Spring, seeking to subvert the Catholic Church and turn it into a more progressive institution. Well, that already happened at Vatican II, but I guess they want to take it to the next level. Clinton attorney David Kendall admits the legal team did not turn over important email thumb driver servers to the State Department. Yeah, we saw that in the last couple of days with 600,000 emails with Huma Abedin and Wiener and all this stuff. Of course, duh. African Americans and Muslims are called losers in the emails. Needy Latinos. So notice all the uh, <laughs> ridiculous racial uh, disparaging in these emails despite the progressive face that Hillary puts on of being uh, uh, anti-racist and sexist, racist and misogynist. The multiple emails reveal mainstream media collusion. Exactly. I was going to get to that in a moment with Operation Mockingbird 2.0. In fact, uh, 
we're going to see that it's something like 65 major media persons uh, directly coordinated with Hillary, and they just received their marching orders from the Hillary campaign. Clinton staffers discussed which of Hillary's emails to release and which to delete. <laughs> of course they did. It's like people are surprised that, uh, that they were doing this. Uh, Donna Brazil, in the in fact, had the exact wording of the questions sent to Clinton for the town hall campaign. Oh, you know, obviously, uh, Hillary knew her questions because she can't have a off-the-cuff conversation. She has to read from her cue cards, as we saw in the final debate. Everything she said was rote. It was very robotic because she's basically a hollow zombie. Hillary campaign planned to fool Bernie and his self-righteous ideologue supporter, supporters, who they called uh, basically basement dwelling losers right so once again more corruption shows that the political process is a joke voting is a joke saudi arabia and qatar and the clinton foundation are behind isis we already knew that we said that for a long time now we saw that earlier in this discussion a preferential treatment would be given to bill's friends following the haiti earthquake uh, right the whole clinton foundation haiti scam stealing all the money clinton called Bernie Sanders supporters losers. We knew that. She gave private speeches to Goldman Sachs talking about uh, having a dual policy, for one for the public and then one secretly for the oligarchs privately. Duh, that's obvious. Clinton campaign called, uh, Clinton's own campaign referred to, as media, referred to her as mediocre and lackluster, obviously. She is. Clinton campaign was concerned that Bill's sex life would be a liability. Well, obviously. So a lot of this stuff is obvious, but uh, it's good to see this collection here, which highlights a lot of the big ones. Uh, it doesn't mention, because when Roisey posted this, it hadn't come out yet about the voter fraud, but of course there's email mentionings of how to coordinate the voter fraud, which we know voting is fraud, but specifically the mechanics of how it's done right, is outlined in these discussions. The next one, another Clinton corruption eruption. According to Royce, it's not like anyone who isn't snorting Hillary the cunt Clinton's magic muff dust needs the additional confirmation that she's a corrupt, wicked bitch. Here is another log to add to the pile. Close Clinton ally gave $467,500 to the wife of FBI Director Andrew McCabe, who was investigating Clinton. <laughs> so there, there you see that's how it's done. It's just a direct payoff. Uh, right, the Clinton Foundation is in the background uh, funneling the money to basically make the problems go away. P uh, Podesta linked directly to the voter fraud, and this is from a WikiLeaks email. John and Khalid came up with $50,000 from SEIU for the bus, and this is, I uh, presume, the idea of busing people to different locations to have them vote, and this is what was also mentioned in the Veritas project videos uh, of the guy talking about I think this is the Scott Fobal guy talking about how it's done uh, you use the unions the leftists the immigrants blacks minorities you bust them around you give them money the very same thing that we saw Soros doing exactly see <laughs> Soros was doing this with Ferguson the riots busing people putting them up in hotels and then having them come out in provocateur and paying them $15 an hour that came out as well and this is the exact same scam trick that they are using with the voting now i'm not saying that voting is good but i'm saying this is how the mechanics of how they rig it i mentioned uh, the veritas project and the admitted scott foval character character in the podesta emails and here he is talking about how the fraud is done through the busing of people around the same style of soros and the riots an election we did for them when we were in charge too. So what we did, we did the exact same thing. Uh, only we we man manipulated the vote with money and action, not with laws. It's a very easy thing for Republicans to say, well, they're busting people in. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in, deep in fucking asshole, for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just going to find a different way to do it. So, I mean, I grew up with that idea. You know, they they used to bust people out to Iowa. If we need people out there, we used to bust people out to Iowa. When we met Scott Fovel, he worked for People for the American Way an organization funded in large part by George Soros. He now works for Americans United for Change. It's a nonprofit that claims to, quote, 
move America in a new, better direction, unquote. With guys like Fovel working for them, we wonder what direction that might be. What's obvious is the direction that's outlined in Brave New World, which is to make everybody into compliant Brave New World zombies, right? It's not liberalism. It's not progressivism. Uh, as people think, it is literal, total control, total 1984. So let's keep in mind that that's what Soros wants. That's what the open society means. That's the long-term plan. And don't get caught up in all this election fervor and forget the big scale picture, which we always point out at Jay's analysis. To the issue of Operation Mockingbird 2.0, we see that WikiLeaks listed at least 65 mainstream media reporters who were meeting with and or coordinating with top Hillary advisors. Obviously, right, the journalists, quote unquote, ABC, CBS, Politico, NBC, CNN, 65 mainstream reporters, the, pe the people you see on TV, the people running these big so-called websites, all coordinating with the Hillary Clinton campaign. And this, again, is nothing but what we've seen for years, decades back into the 40s and 50s, as I've highlighted, uh, in terms of Operation Mockingbird and the CIA basically buying off and controlling all the mainstream outlets of print and television media, right? C CBS, NBC, C uh, ABC, these started with William Paley, William Sarnoff, <coughs> David Sarnoff, and the OSS. That's who started ma mass media. And so it's mass media itself is a creation of the intelligence agency. So the idea that this is coordinated as some new scandal uh, is completely incorrect. It's a, been coordinated from the get-go, and that's why the whole country goes. That's why the uh, the the plans never change, right? You get different political parties and leaders, but the overall plan marches forward, and things never change. And that's because the entire mass media is created by social engineers, the the worshippers of scientism, Wall Street, and the bankers. What does the Daily Mail tell us? Clinton's Silicon Valley secrets, right? And yet another angle on all these WikiLeaks. Uh, Google boss Eric Schmidt drew up campaign plan. Hillary met with Uber, Airbnb, and Lyft executives for a private roundtable. New WikiLeaks email show that <clears throat> Schmidt drew up the plans. Uh, total coordination between her and these new tech Silicon Valley startups. So the whole establishment is nothing but a bunch of cuck conservative, a bunch of <clears throat> uh, transgender leftists, and complete mind control zombie psychopaths who are literally destroying the entire nation as well as humanity itself. Uh, again, the all of these corporations you have to understand: Citibank, Goldman Sachs. These are the people, these tech companies, all started by the CIA and QTEL, right? They're the ones that are pushing all of the transgender stuff. It's the same group. They're the ones that are pushing the total open borders. They're the ones that are pushing the insane gay rights education, right? Gay education, sex education. That's all intended to completely wreck you and destroy you, destroy your humanity, destroy genders, right? So it's not just other countries in Syria, it's also target populations in Western nations, and that's what's crucial to understand. That Jay's analysis has dealt quite often with the connection between Hollywood and the CIA, or Hollywood and politics, Hollywood and the Pentagon, the military, and all that. And what does WikiLeaks tell us? Well, it backs up that very contention in a new way. WikiLeaks reveals who's in Hollywood that's on Hillary's call list. No surprises here, but it again, it's another angle that shows, that demonstrates the thesis of my book, Esoteric Hollywood, that the CIA and Hollywood are flip sides of the same coin. Days after leaving the Obama White House, John Podesta set to work on courting Hollywood for his new boss, Hillary. The leaked emails reveal that many in Hollywood, the big wigs, were directly on the Hillary list. Obviously, now who didn't know this, right? But this is, again, it shows the close uh, connection, close parallel between theater, stagecraft, and statecraft. And they they, lynch, they mention uh, Alan Horn of Warner Brothers. Uh, they mention Jeffrey Katzenberg uh, of uh, what DreamWorks, right? And so yet another angle on the coordination, not just between mass news, but also Hollywood and the CIA. Because remember that the Clintons, they don't represent just liberalism. They represent Wall Street they represent Goldman Sachs, the bankers, the Rockefellers, 
They represent Zionism. They represent the state of Israel. Uh, they represent everything that is basically Brave New World. <laughs> That's what the Clintons represent, even more so than any, any other. The, I mean, the GOP people are awful, right? But, I mean, the Clintons are the total Southern Belle, like I said, of the New World Order. The result of all this scandal, who does the establishment roll out as some sort of secret weapon? Evan McMullen, the CIA Goldman Sachs candidate backed by Mitt Romney's Wall Street machine. Much has been made. Uh, much has been made by Democrat Hillary Clinton and the White House accusation that Russia is trying to influence the U.S. elections. On the other hand, there is plenty of evidence that the CIA is interfering and altering with other foreign elections all throughout the globe. This has been going on for decades. See Servando Gonzalez's book, Psychological Warfare in the New World Order, which lists dozens of those operations to achieve regime changes and social engineering in other countries. But here we have this guy coming out of the Mormon Utah establishment who claims to be a conservative columnist, and he's here to talk about the CIA, or excuse me, about uh, Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump working together and Russia being behind all of this nonsense that Hillary's involved in. No, what did we see earlier? Hillary and the Clinton Foundation have deals with the fifth column in Russia. And so this guy is just complete phony, complete full of shit nonsense that's rolled out as uh, 21st Century Wire says by the CIA banker establishment, Wall Street establishment, to try to prop up Hillary's conspiracy theory. I guess they're good now, right? Hillary's conspiracy theory that Russia is behind all the problems in America and her campaign problems, by the way. This back into the beginning of our discussion where we talked about foreign policy, and we know that Soros is behind uh, a lot of what's going on in Syria. Soros was involved in the situation in Ukraine. The background of Libya with Hillary at the State Department and the ousting of Gaddafi. And what do we see to tie this all to come full circle? The emails also reveal that one of the goals is to make Soros happy inside the Clinton team's mission to please billionaire VIP George Soros. So, again, this shows that this is total establishment corruption, total establishment coordination across the board. What have we been saying in the, the so-called conspiracy world for so long? The media, Hollywood, education, Silicon Valley, the big tech companies, the surveillance, the NSA, right? The CIA, Wall Street, it's all shown through all of this as one giant pyramid. The very thing we've been talking about. It all, it's all out there in the open now. That's what's so crazy about this. And so I, I agree it doesn't matter. The political stuff is not a big deal. But you see, all of this is a window into showing you everything that I've been talking about from Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope for the last year. It shows that it's all real and it's one giant continuity system. Conspiracy theories, that's a pejorative. That's what you say to dispel any genuine research or interest into the workings of the world in, a, in some real sense. But now it's okay, right? So the system, the establishment is fine with you talking about UFOs. That's a government stamped okay conspiracy theory. That's a good one. You can talk about Russian hackers. Absolutely no evidence for this. Uh, hacking and trying to destroy Hillary. Absolutely no evidence of this. No, it's people from the inside, which is what we saw at the very beginning of this talk, right? And uh, Patrick Henningsen's done a great article that this whole soap opera that drags on uh, the most ridiculous aspect of this is is the accusation from now even Joe Biden chiming in with Hillary that we're we're sending a message right we have the capacity to do it we're going to threaten Russia uh, it's the you know the Clinton campaign as we see even the Washington Post has decided to escalate Russian rhetoric Trump suggested Wednesday that if Russia had hacked Clinton's emails then the Clinton campaign uh, should bash Russia right but there's no evidence of this there's absolutely there's no proof of this all hillary offered was secret intelligence people that told her this right so this is nothing but lying liars trying to blame someone else for their own corruption that's now just out naked and in, in, in the open and isn't it great to just see all of this just completely crumbling uh it's it's not russian hackers it's it's the wicked wicked establishment the people who run all these drug money laundering banks for billions of dollars. That's who's behind Hillary. That's who's behind the GOP and the Democrats. 
Uh, that's who is behind Obama. That's who's been running things in this country for 100 years. It's the oligarchs that Carol Quigley talks about in Tragedy and Hope. On a big picture look at this, you can go to tryingday.com and you can find my book there, Esoteric Hollywood Sex, Cults, and Symbols in Film, where I don't just talk about movies or Hollywood sex scandals or something like that. No, I go into the deeper themes of metaphysics, of secret societies, of geopolitics, psychological warfare. All of that's covered in my book. It's, it's a, I think, a tremendous piece of research, 404 pages total, counting all the sidebars that I added in. Uh, you're getting uh, 400 plus footnotes. So it's very well researched. It's not like any other book of this kind. And it shows, as I said, the coordination across the board, right? And that Hollywood and the films are telling us how the real wor world works all along if we pay attention. And so my book is designed to kind of give you the keys to decode this in popular film, not just in big blockbusters, but also the classics of the silver screen and so forth. And I also would direct you to, as I've been talking about in this expose report here, these WikiLeaks emails are a window into the corruption of the system that is not new, right? All this stuff that we're learning is not some recent manifestation or recent carcinogen that has infected the body politic. This has been going on for a long time. And so I've been lecturing on Carol Quigley's book, Tragedy and Hope, this big fat tome that you see here. And I'm seven lectures deep. I'm 1,100 pages in. And you can find those here. The first half is free. But you can also go to Jay's Analysis and subscribe here for $4.95 a month or for $60 a year where you get the full talks and lectures and you get the full picture where I break down this gigantic, massive tome. I don't know how else to put it. This, this State Department CFR production that tells you everything about how the real world works. And to my knowledge, nobody else has done a lecture series on the entire book so you can go to jasonalysis.com you can find that you can also check out Al alternate current radio where the sunday wire where jay's analysis and boiler room play uh, you can also check out 21st century wire uh, patrick henningson's work vanessa Beely's work and check out soldtheeast.org where daniel spaulding myself and mark hackard write our essays on geopolitics philosophy and all things esoteric Thank you for listening. Check out jaysanalysis.com. Welcome, you're listening to Jay's Analysis. This is Jay Dyer, the author of Esoteric Hollywood Sex, Cults, and Symbols in Film. I thought that it would be necessary and appropriate to do a discussion of just the avalanche of political scandal, mayhem, and circus that has arisen in the last month or so, two months. Uh, it's just unbelievable, really, off the charts. We, you know, we think about Watergate, we think about that being something of import historically, which that was probably... Uh, overhyped and uh, made a bigger deal of than it actually was to kind of 
probably plant the seeds of kind of the dissolution of the older system of how we believe that the president and the uh, the electoral system of representatives and senators and so forth uh, that that these people really run the country when of course they don't I think probably the system has known for a long time that it would eventually become apparent that we live in this total oligarchy that has these these front men these puppets these so-called elected officials that kind of stand as a frontispiece kind of like a, a movie set with a big fake building or a fake saloon that's you know just the front of the building and then you go inside and there's nothing there right well i think it's kind of the same idea with the well with with what the bankers and the oligarchs knew would would come in time uh, that the the people would eventually probably catch on to this and so what needs to happen or what ought to happen is just kind of the the dissolution and alteration of the system as a whole into something new and that is mentioned at length in Tragedy and Hope, which is the, the large tome by Dr. Carol Quigley, who was the mentor of Bill Clinton. He was a professor at Georgetown, and he was a CFR historian. He wrote his massive book and other books from the archives of the CFR. And so in that regard, that's why the book is so important. Even though it's uh, from 1966, it still shows the overall plan and a lot of reading in between the lines, a lot of deeper stuff that we don't get elsewhere that you don't get in mainstream media. Now, what happens for most people is that they get caught up in the news, they get caught up in media, they get caught up in what's happening today and tomorrow. And of course, all this stuff gets forgotten. And most of the, apparently, probably, very likely, not happy with the Clintons. I mean, if you think about the Clintons, they've got this long history of making so many people angry and a long trail of dead bodies. I mean, it's just unbelievable that these people, right? So, no, the Clintons kind of, they're not, I don't think, at the top of the pyramid. They are a part of the pyramid. There's no question there. They're, they're allowed to actually do things. They actually do run things. They were involved in, you know, the CIA drug tra traffic and all that back in Mena, Arkansas. We all know about all that public stuff. And yet these people are still in politics. And to show the absurdity of all this, we saw who does, who does, does the Bush family come out and support? Well, obviously the Clintons, right? Now, we're not going to talk about Donald Trump, really, because that's not the important aspect of all this. What's most important in this analysis that I'm giving is the tremendous amount of corruption that shows, again, everything that we, quote, conspiracy theorists have been saying is totally correct. And we don't say that because we just sat around making up things or speculating. I mean, the smartest people that I know, very, very highly, highly intelligent people, are people who would be classed as, quote, conspiracy theorists because they actually know what's going on in the world, right? I mean, we're talking about people who have read hundreds, thousands of books, okay? I have a giant library, right? I mean, I'm not speaking about these topics from no knowledge. I mean, I've been studying this stuff since I was 18, 19, right? I'm almost 40. So I'm almost 15, 20 years deep into this topic, I don't even think I'm an expert at this stage. I still think I'm you know, learning new things every day. But what I am glad to learn and am glad to see is that the whole system is such a joke and so ridiculous and so unbelievably corrupt that I don't think they can even contain it. And you say, well, how might that benefit the system? Well, I think uh, Chris over at Hoaxbusters had a good point that you know, like Quigley says, this is a, the age of transition. And regardless of what you think of the American system, which, I, you know, I'm a big critic of that. I, I criticize it very often in my talks and podcasts and articles. Being an enlightenment experiment, it's an older phase that's got to be phased out, right? So it's not a question of good or bad or what you like or don't like about it. For the ruling social engineers and oligarchs, that phase, that beta stage of world order and Americanism is the seeds the beginning beta stage of the new world order right Francis Bacon's new Atlantis that has to go away to transition into the new stage so there's probably a lot of truth to what Chris says as we discussed in our last uh, discussion at Hoaxbusters uh, that the 
the system as it is has to be phased out. And one way to do that is to just kind of light a fire and let it explode. And so the total demonstration of how corrupt it really is through all this WikiLeaks stuff could also play into that, right? It could play into the fact that, you know, it causes apathy. People say, oh, well, there's no point. All this stuff is just ridiculous. Who cares? The presidential elections are the exact same way. Nobody cares about Dukakis and Bush anymore, right? That was, when I was a kid, that was a big deal, the Dukakis and Bush. That was all anybody was talking about. And uh, nowadays, right, it's it's this issue of uh, Trump and Clinton. And the reason I want to talk about it is because what has come out <laughs> just completely vindicates everything that so-called conspiracy theorists have said, right? Now, I mean, I've been called this for a long time. I, I've, I've been involved in politics, too. I had a period of years where I wasn't a libertarian, but I was involved in working to support Ron Paul and Rand Paul. And I even co-broke a national news story that was intimately, I would say, connected to Rand Paul gaining several poll points and winning the Kentucky senatorial election. And this was in relationship to a Democratic provocateur who was kind of using Saul Alinsky style tactics. Now, that's all in the past. That was 2010. Here we are six years later, and the national scene is, of course, just it's like nuclear it's nuclear nuclear explosion of politics to, to, to use the google's the maps filters on internet the words of w right what did w say right nuclear and that's what we've got we've got a nuclear explosion of political insanity and everybody who talks about it who's been alive longer than i've been alive says they don't remember anything like this before They've never seen anything like this, right? It pales in comparison to Watergate, and it does. And what's amazing is that Hillary Clinton, with all of these, this avalanche of scandals, is not, and it's like one one hundredth of Watergate. And that took Nixon down, right? Now, this is like 10 times that, but the mainstream media, of course, as we know, they won't report on the WikiLeaks stuff, not because WikiLeaks itself is some great paragon of what's legitimate i don't think it is and in fact i'm going to show you i argued for several years now that it's also part of the dialectic it's part of this the stage managed psychodrama that we're all supposed to participate in but what is interesting is that i said on a boiler room our show on alternate current radio which you can check out great show i said uh it's on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. at uh, alternatecurrentradio.com, 21stCenturyWire.com. I said that this whole thing was because Hillary and the Clintons were so corrupt that they had made so many people angry in the establishment. So we go back to Benghazi. We go back to the time of uh, the destruction of Libya with Hillary heading up that project and the government apparatus, the State Department, and so forth. That regime change, which destroyed that a developing country for at the behest of course of the western oligarchs oil men and bankers and uh, hillary's uh, crew clinton foundation and so forth all benefiting from all this this corruption uh, i said that well the, the way to understand why assange and wikileaks even if they're not what they appear to be uh, the way to understand why they would leak all this stuff is because there are a lot of people who are and beyond the Clinton Foundation. But what we're seeing with the Clinton Foundation, what we're seeing with Hillary and the staged political theater that's all coming out and how it's all rigged with the media and as we're going to see, tied into all the scams and the CIA and all that, it's an image, it's a picture of how the whole thing works. And that's why it's so unbelievable. So let's look at this uh, quote here, this clip from Dr. Pachinik that shows, as I said, that WikiLeaks is a deep state apparatus leak engine which I said for all along on 2016 Hillary and Bill Clinton and their entourage of assistants affected a civilian coup in contrast to the usual concept of a coup where the military is involved and takes over the White House and communication centers very much like the scenarios you see in a movie. This coup was done silently and very effectively through two methods, corruption and co-optation. The Clintons have been involved in co-opting our 
White House, our judiciary, our CIA, our Federal Bureau of Investigation, our Attorney General Loretta Lynch, and our Director of the FBI, James Comey, for some time now. What they've done is to make sure that they were part and parcel of a group of people who were interrelated through political cronyism. However, in order to stop this coup, we in the intelligence community and others involved have informally gotten together and with their permission, I am beginning to announce that we've initiated a counter coup through Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. What has happened in effect when uh, Comey had to open up the case of Hillary Clinton and discuss the emails that were involved with the Anthony Weiner case, it was not the case itself that was as important as the fact that this was the entree for many of us in the counter coup to say to the administration, we have your number. Not only do we have your number, we're going to stop you from making Hillary the president of the United States. And at the same time, we will convict and indict the president of the United States, Loretta Lynch, and many others who were involved in the cover-up of the massive corruption that occurred under the Clinton Foundation. Now, in both cases, their coup was silent. And our counter coup was silent, and it was all uh, transgressed or occurred on the internet. And this is probably the first time in the history of any country where a coup was initiated on through the internet and a counter coup was initiated through the internet. I am just a small part of something far bigger than myself. It was the brave men and women who were in the FBI, the CIA, the Director of Intelligence the uh, military intelligence and men and women in 15 other intelligence organizations who were sick and tired of seeing this corruption in the White House and the Justice Department and in the intelligence system. You know, let's just fall back into fantasy. Let's just give me my fantasy football, give me my NFL. None of the stuff even matters. Who cares? It's a joke. Let's just uh, eat, eat, drink, and be merry, right? To use the words of Solomon. Now, I want to look at, <laughs> again, what has, I got. I have to say, Jay's analysis has been pointing this out for a long time, as has 21st Century Wire. Uh, there's many, many excellent articles that Patrick and uh, Sean Helton, Vanessa Beely, and others have been writing for so long over at 21st Century Wire that have been saying this for so long. And now it's all coming out. Everything that we've talked about for a long time, about how the system really works, about how espionage works, how whistleblowers and leaking works and all this stuff targeted leaks and so forth it's all being demonstrated right now and we're going to look at uh, several examples that show again we are vindicated we are right we know what we're talking about the entire establishment apparatus is completely fake it's completely a joke they're there to basically be operation mockingbird 2.0 to reinforce the globalist line the, the very things that we've been talking about for so long, right? So let's talk, uh, let's look at some examples. Now, I want to look first at uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik, who is a frequent guest on Alex Jones. He's, of course, the author of many of the, co-author of many of the uh, Tom Clancy books. Uh, <clears throat> this is not necessarily an endorsement of everything that Pachenik says. I'm just pointing out that it's interesting in this video that he says this because uh, I posted my Snowden WikiLeaks analysis a few years ago that he actually reposted. Uh, and what I argued in my piece, as I'll show here in a little bit, is that the Snowden WikiLeaks phenomenon was basically um, a deep state apparatus version of how you do a target leak, right? Targeted leaks, limited hangouts. Now, when it came to explaining how and why the establishment would be if it is indeed a deep state thing, why would they be leaking all this stuff on Hillary when Hillary quite clearly seems to be the ultimate total globalist candidate? And she absolutely does, right? Setting aside Trump for a second, I mean, Hillary has been to Bilderberg many times. And she's the total darling. She's the Southern <coughs> Dyke Bell <laughs> of the establishment, along with, uh, along with Bill, her husband. How dare you? How dare you? Now, let's uh, look at this clip from Dr. 
Pachenik, which shows my point that I made a few weeks ago on Boiler Room, that this is uh, an element or a faction within the establishment that uh, it does not like Hillary. And I think that that is true. Now, again, keep in mind, this is all still at the level of stage dialectics in a way, I would say, because Hillary uh, doesn't run things. Right, Hillary is not even a billionaire. So there are oligarchs, much older, families much older, much more powerful, uh, that are above 